Yo yo what is up guys welcome back to a brand new league racing video on F1 2021. Today we're racing around Paul Ricard for round 4 in PSGL. We missed last round um, around Monaco as, as I was in Sweden for the race of champions. So we missed a round but we didn't lose any points to the championship leader as the championship leader didn't score any points and Barry Wormut MP2 didn't score very well as well, so we're P8 with 11 points after a pretty poor start uh, and missing Monaco. I got penalized in Silverstone for the incident with Nikos Longay, which I felt like was a bit questionable, but I wasn't allowed to protest it, so um, yeah, that was a bit questionable as well. But anyway, we are still in the championship hunt. We're only 17 points behind the leader, Shanika Clay. And Paul Ricard usually is a pretty good track for me, so you know. Um, once again heading into this with a bit of lack of practice as I arrived home one day before uh, this race from the race of champions in Sweden. I was there for almost a full week, so uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, got to race, I got to race uh, Mick Schumacher and Sebastian Vettel, learned to drive uh, on the ice. So um, it was very hard, but something very enjoyable, uh, learning some new things, racing on the ice. Absolutely loved every single second of it. Got to meet so many racing legends. Jimmy Johnson, um, Mick Schumacher, Sebastian Vettel, but also a lot of these rally guys like Oliver Solberg, uh, Peter Solberg, Sebastian Loop, uh, Jimmy Johnson, of course, NASCAR legend, Colton Herta, IndyCar. Um, so yeah, it was just so amazing. I probably missed still missed a few people that I met but it was so amazing it was organized so nice so um, yeah honestly probably one of the best weeks of my life not gonna lie uh, even went for uh, a quick ice bath in uh, minus 20 degrees uh, so yeah it was just so much fun I absolutely loved it but now um, back to the racing part this is Q1 and this is gonna be my first lap of the session on uh, this set of softs. Um, I haven't done an outlap yet, I think so. I think I might have done an outlap on the intermediates just to check if everything was working. Uh, but we didn't go for the mediums as we want to save them for Q2. So um, into the next right hander. You can see that turn 1 2 was pretty poor, not gonna lie. 28 4 from Wilson Hughes. Uh, 21.782 as you can see in the top right in the first split. And that's like two and a half tens off. Uh, for only four corners, so that was a very, very, very poor sector one uh, from me. And now we're gonna have to try and pull that back. Barry Berman 28.0 um, on his first attempt. He's probably not gonna have to go out again, and that's our aim as well to not have to go out again and save our tires for later on in quali or in the race. Into the last sector now, 48.932, and. The last split usually is around a 0.3 or a 0.4, so we're looking for a 28.3 here probably, so it's not going to be fastest by quite a margin. But as I said, I messed up that first sector, so that's making our life very, very hard. And in this last sector, it's very easy to overheat the rear tires. So in this left hander and in the final hairpin, it's going to be easy to have the rear snap away. We got it pretty nicely so that you can see there on the exit, that's where the tires are struggling but sometimes you get it even earlier on in that fast left and then cost you a lot of time over the line 28.405 almost, almost um had to go out again as i wasn't yeah, comfortable sorry, mate, with that six. so oh, i should tell you went out again 28.242 on my second set um of softs now onto q2 then you can see we went out to the mediums um and this is our final lap and i was aiming for p11 not gonna lie i wanted to go for the altered threat we get across the line, P12, and um, yeah, it was just so tight. It was Close. very hard to aim for P11. Um, Jake Benham and Danny Bresney still in the lap. Jake Benham comes across the line with uh, a 29.2. We ended up in P13, which was completely fine for me, uh, as my aim was to start on the hard tires. So you can see the rain at the end of the race, and that was my whole strategy, to start on the hards and then try to stretch those hearts until the end but in the qualifying you cannot very see precisely how uh, or when the rain is going to come so I, I knew rain anymore. was coming at any other race but not how accurate it was going to be yeah. so um, we might have gambled wrong 
as looking at that start screen, I didn't expect, or I don't expect at this point, that it's gonna rain. Uh, simply because that box of rain is so late on, it's probably after the race. But we still went for the hards, as, um, yeah, we just have to ask Jeff. Radar is clear, weather is looking good for now. Dry seem like the fastest tire at the moment. Yeah, we just have to ask Jeff what's gonna happen mid-race, and then um, adjust the strategy from there. If we go hards, we can um, still stretch it to the rain in case the rain does come. Uh, but we can also still box for softs, which is a perfect, perfectly fine strategy as well. But now, heading into the race then, five red lights, and away we go for round four of PSGL. We get a pretty good start compared to the other hard runners. Into turn one, I'm gonna go down the inside of Yoni Tormala, and a little look um, of where Alvaro was going, but now around the outside for the next one, we have more momentum, and we leave enough space for Yoni on the inside, and he leaves enough space for us on the outside. Alessio goes a bit weird with his line through there. I thought he had front wing damage at the time, because his line was very confusing. I don't know what was going maybe he had an issue with his wheel or something. I don't know exactly what was going on, but now we've gained two positions, so very solid start on these hard tires. Um, you know, we had the same in Portimao, starting on the hearts and then gaining positions, um, which is not what you expect. You expect to be losing positions if you start on the hearts. And now, um, yeah, it's just an amazing start. We're gonna have to try, um, both me and Alvaro, to keep up with the soft runners because that's our main goal here. And that's gonna be super important because if we can keep up, stay in the DRS, they will pull us along. Uh, in that DRS train, you can see Simon is a little bit of a gap towards Nicolas Longay. Um, Nicolas didn't have a great start, or maybe not the best of Q3s. I think he might have invalidated it. So, you know, a bit of a rough um, opening start for him with that poor qualifying result. Um, but yeah, now we just have to um, be patient. I'm not gonna fight Alvaro. I need to work together with Alvaro here and try to stay with the soft runners because that's gonna help both of us in um, this moment in the race. So um, moving on half a lap later now, Alessio on the soft behind me using his overtake. I decided to not fight him, um, give him the space he needs uh, in both of the right handers. And now he's gonna get past us. Uh, him on the soft, I expect him to be really fast and pull us along. Um, unfortunately, he was not, and I think that's because he had wing damage. As I said earlier on, he probably got wing, dam wing damage earlier on in the race, and we did not know that. So now we've lost a lot of time, and we are one second behind Alvaro, who is on the same strategy as us, and he's getting pulled along by the soft runners. So we are in quite a bit of trouble here, not gonna lie, um, because we have to gain over a second to get back in the DRS of the train we want to be in, and, you know, the softs are still faster at this point in the race. So, luckily I did have a full battery, but the guy's head might have a full battery as well. You can see Alvaro is struggling a little bit to stay within that Carrot second just fallen out of, DRS. of Simon. Um, as you can hear, my engineer Sam say Caraton has oh, fallen well. out of DRS, but he managed to get back in as those softs are melting in this last sector. So, the hearts are clawing back time in this last sector so um, you can see now we've gained around six tenths seven tenths on this lap alone and with the help of ERS of course but we need to gain another half second personal best as you can see in the top right by 7.7 tenths and that just shows we're pushing as hard as we can to try and close that gap back down and now we have almost have no battery left I'm gonna be trying to get back in the DRS before the detection zone that's coming up in around two corners. You can see 1.1 seconds. I'm pushing as hard as I can. Backhand snaps out. Personal best first sector by six tenths. And we just missed out on the DRS zone. But we're gonna have to keep pushing. So that next lap, we will be able to be in the DRS. We're gonna be losing time probably a little bit on the straight as Alvaro does have DRS. So that means we're gonna have to keep pushing on this lap to um, get the DRS on the next lap. Probably we will be able to um, get that DRS as long as the guys had to don't use too much of their overtake and ERS. You um, can see there, we dropped off a little bit in that middle sector because we didn't have DRS to uh, our previous personal best. And we also lost like a 10 to over a caraton. But then 
in this middle sector. He's obviously quite close to Simon, so he's losing a few tents in that dirty air. And um, it's helping us. So that's good. Now, DRS detection coming up for the main trade right here. And that means we will have DRS uh, again. And that means we can start recharging our battery. Take it a little bit easier and just chill behind this group of cars because there's no point destroying our tires and uh, draining our battery to maybe pass one car when all of those people are gonna pass soon, uh, a pit soon anyway. Because you know, end of lap eight, uh, two people that started on soft have pitted as Simon goes for a very what? late uh, move into the pits. Um, I just absolutely yeeted into the pits over the pit exit, <laughs> pit entry line. But um, yeah. Did you get a penalty? I mean, uh, <laughs> it's all reported. Yeah, penalty. What? Now back to the race, Nicolas Longay. Um, 2.1 Sorry, no, Simon. He has a pretty good job, not gonna lie, this race so far. Getting back up because he ruined this um, uh, qualifying, of course. But with his help of his good rate pace, he managed to claw back a bit. And now on to um, midway lap 12. We got a good run on Alvaro, so we're gonna get past him, not using any overtake. Uh, we recharge the battery, and we just have to work together a little bit here to uh, try and beat the people who started on softs of course um, we are planning to go for softs if it does not uh, start raining um, as the softs are really really fast for a very short amount of time so um, long yeah we're gonna 31. need that eight. as you can hear my engineer say longer than the 31.8 but he's on new mediums a lot of people went for mediums right hey, um, apart from Danny Bresne we went on the hard so Quite the opposite to what we were doing. Um, I decided to box at the end of this lap and go for the softs. Seven qualifying laps on the soft compound of tires. Um, boxing right now, making sure to break in time. Took it pretty carefully. Um, and now boxing for the softs. Hearts were still in a pretty good shape, but of course we need to optimize our race time and. Um, we still have a lot of people to overtake, not gonna lie. We were in a net P11 before everyone boxed. So, um, yeah, basically another 10 people to overtake. Um, luckily, we'll have around 100% battery, just under it. I think we'll have 90% as we take off the pit limiter. And coming out, we are in P16, um, which I think is a net P14. So um, a lot of people went for the undercut, um, but I felt like having fresh tires towards the end of the race would be a bigger advantage. So um, now I'm straight away going on attack because you need to use those softs very, very well. Uh, Yoni Tormela pitted one lap earlier than us, and we are straight away going on the attack. Gonna try and overtake Let me know him. How long does on this lap? Um, on this okay. rate, with the help of the DRS, I turned on the o turned off the overtake um, once I opened the DRS, as I felt like. I was going to be easily overtaking Yoni second. anyway. And I think Yoni no, just and knows so that we have that one lap fresh tires, which doesn't sound like a lot, but as I said, those softs wear out very fast. Um, so what is so that one lap is P1? massive. That's Barry, right? Yep, just give me a second. Yeah, tell me the lap time first and then the gap. Just going to say, uh, I wanted to know the gap to the leaders, so I know how much I need to gain every single lap on average to catch up to them before the end of the race and also pass them, of course. Um, as a very famous commentator once said, catching is one thing, passing is another. And now we've caught up to Time and Shooter, who has almost caught up to Simon Wagon, so we're not going to be able to pass Time on this straight. I think Time went very aggressive, he pitted at the end of lap 17, so he has to do 10 laps on the soft. We went purple middle and purple last sector on. Uh, or outlap, which shows that we have the pace advantage. 32.2. Um, so Nicholas did 32.2, and yeah, I think he is looking at the mini map around five seconds ahead of us. So we need to be gaining like a second per lap on average. But you can see there in the top right, we went one second faster than our previous uh, personal best in the hearts. So that means that we can do the same in all other sectors, then Gap we're going to be going three seconds. three seconds faster. Um, 
than the leaders, but we have to overtake a lot of people as well, of course. So it's not going to be three seconds, probably. We had pretty clean air in that first sector. And I don't want to be using all of my ERS on a single lap. As you can see there, Simon flashing, um, which means his battery is below 10%. And once again, when we went green in the middle sector, our tires are slowly going to be degrading, of course. Um, as you know, now I'm going to send it down the inside of Simon. Simon is not fighting it. He knows that, you know, with five laps to go, it's just impossible to defend, basically. You know, those tires are probably around two seconds per lap faster at this point. And if he's going to be fighting, then he's just going to lose time. There's no point for him um, to do that. He would just be ruining his own race. And now... I got DRS from Dario Lemulo ahead of us on the mediums and we do a 30.1 which means we're 2.1 seconds faster than Nikos Longe who is in this leading group ahead of us and you know I wasn't sure if I was gonna go for the move in Dario but I decided very late on to do so and send it down the inside second fortunately I got my second warning which uh, is uh, not ideal you know um, Dario was not fighting us same uh, he made the same decision as with uh, assignment that's not to fight us as we're two seconds per lap faster no matter how hard you defend you're gonna get past because two second pace defense is just so huge there's nothing you can do uh, as there's not much dirt here like in real life uh, Formula 1 so um, yeah now Danny Bresne on the hearts up next um, we've got two warnings now so that makes it very tricky towards the end of the race but the leaders are only two seconds ahead of us so as i said before if we are gaining two seconds per lap that means um we will catch them within a lap we will be past them within a lap which is crazy to think because you can see they're still so far ahead but those softs are just so incredibly fast that now you can see we've got like half a second in one corner to danny resne and it's not because he's driving bad it's just because those softs are so much faster we're in a completely different league to those guys we go down the inside of danny we just leave him enough space to stay within um, two tires on the track. And now we're using our battery properly for the first time on Wilson and Huge. Um, as we still have so much battery left, we have got like 60% left. And by the time we get to the next DRS zone, we all have like 70%. Barry's last lap was which is huge. Again, the no, Barry 32.2. And which shows we are still two seconds no, faster. My stream's freezing. And now I was thinking about sending out the Nicolas there, but we have the time like there's still four laps to go and our tires are still in such a nice shape we can, you can see how much more speed we got out of that corner and um, we still have so much battery left as well there's nothing they can do we get past Nicolas Longe and now the net leader is right there which is Barry Bormand um, but first we have to get past Brendan Lee um, but yeah as I said we still have so much battery we still have so much tires left Barry tries to give a little bit of slipstream to Brendan but I'm gonna keep on the overtake button, go down the inside of Brendan. Brendan knows there's no point in fighting this. And into the next right, and we're gonna straight away go for it down the inside of uh, Barry. I give him the space on the outside, and up to a net P1 Guys we go. Guys ahead are aiming for interrupt. So yeah, the guys ahead are uh, risking it and for staying out um, and hoping for a last lap rain so they can box for inters, but. It's very much looking also, like it's not going to race. I need to know ace up. 23%. So yeah, now we need to try and get out of the DRS from Barry as yeah, soon as possible because our softs will drop off eventually, probably in the last lap. And, um, you know, I do not want to have Barry in my DRS for the next three laps. So I want to get out of DRS ASAP me, and that's why I'm absolutely sending it. And as you can hear me ask, my engineer reminds me of track limits every okay. single lap because we've got two warnings. And unless we get a three second gap to net P2, does that tell um, me Barry has DRS or not? We will lose positions if we get a penalty. So you can see there in the top left, Barry not gaining okay, any time on that straight because he did not get DRS, which means we're out. And now we can start taking it a bit easier, you know, because um, don't want to get another track limit warning, of course. Uh, and you know, you can see there after another two laps, it starts to get dark, but no rain just yet. And we've got a 2.7 second lead to Jake Benham. Um, so, yeah, no stress, didn't take another warning, just took a chill, you know. <laughs> um, what a drive, what an absolute drive! 
I'm watching Jake's stream. I still haven't seen the crash yet. Oh my days! Vamos. Mate, great drive, absolute nuts. But you need to watch Jake's stream back. <laughs> On the last okay. lap, Barry and Are Brendan they? collided and lost a huge amount of time. So Jake, in the end, finished 2.3 seconds behind us. Shanika Clay, 1.3 seconds. But we got penalised. And just to show you how ridiculous this penalty is, here is a screenshot of why I got penalised. I crossed the outside wide line um, entering the pits, which is simply just completely legal. But, you know, um, in Silverstone I got penalised for the incident with Nicolas, which was questionable, not going to lie, but, you know, this could be opinion based. But this is a rule that doesn't even exist in real life racing. And... It didn't exist in PSGL beforehand as well, because I asked multiple times over the past uh, two years what pit entry and pit exit rules were. And it's always the wide line separating the track and the pit entry, um, not the one separating the pit entry and whatever is next to it, which is usually it's an inside corner. Um, on Austria, for example, I'll have a screenshot of that later as well. But this is such a ridiculous penalty because this same white line runs into the pits as well so you're crossing the same white line when you make a pit stop again uh, which makes it even more ridiculous but you know the steward penalizing me is pretty biased not gonna lie um you know i've seen him talk shit about me in f1 esports live streams um about why i was so lucky with strategy etc etc um so you know um, I knew already from the past decisions that they were questionable and probably a little bit biased. Um, but yeah, this is just next level. Like, I will show right here a pit entry from Alex Albon in Barcelona 2020. It, like, this is the inside line running into the pits. Like, the rules, you cannot enforce these rules because... It's the same line running into the pits when you make a pit stop, so you cross it when making a pit stop as well, which means you would have to penalize everyone that makes a pit stop, which is just ridiculous, because otherwise no one will be driving legally around. And as you can see here, the same white line, as I said, runs into the pits, and then you have to cross it to drive into your pit box to uh, make the pit stop. Um, I know this was not enforced in any other tracks, but it was apparently just a special rule for Parry Car. Just a self-made up rule, um, which uh, didn't exist in previous rounds or, you know, in previous seasons. So, um, very questionable. Um, but, you know, I'm not sure if I will do any more PSGO anymore because, you know, I like uh, fighting for a title when I'm behind on points. Because that just makes it exciting, you know, it's worth fighting for something. Um, but, you know, when it's just going to be biased decisions every time there's an incident, then what's the point in driving? Because, um, you know, you expect in a league like PSL, which is getting probably the biggest league ever in sim racing, to have unbiased st stewards. And, you know, and always people will say, oh, you know, these people do all do it for free, but um, within a very short amount of time, um, a league like PSL, will earn a decent amount of money from ad revenue as well. So, you know, that's not an excuse anymore. Um, these leagues will have their own partnerships as well. But, you know, I'm not sure if I will do PSG anymore because, as I said, if it's um, going to be biased decisions against me all the time because the steward doesn't like me, then what's the point in still driving in this league? So I'll have a good think about it, not going to lie. But, um, yeah, I got a five-second penalty in the end, so we finished P3. But yeah, I just find this steering decision probably one of the most ridiculous ones ever. As you can see, it is a pit entry in Austria where if you would make a pit stop, technically you wouldn't be allowed then to take the curb stone on the inside because that would mean you are crossing that inside white line. I understand the one separating pit entry and track, which is a legit rule in real life as well, but this you just make pit entries near impossible. And also, as I said, you cannot enforce it because you're crossing the same one, making a pit stop again. So, yeah, um, as I said, I'll think about it. I'm not sure if I will do PCO anymore um, for the reasons I just talked about. But I hope you guys still enjoyed the race. You know, it was a very exciting race, fighting from the midfield to the 
to the front on that Elton Shred. Really enjoyed that. Uh, everyone was driving pretty cleanly as well with good battles with um, Alvaro and also with some people up front. Um, but yeah, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video nonetheless and see you guys next time. Ciao!